How much of an introduction do I really need to give a franchise like Minecraft? The game where you can take cubes and stack them on top of each other to make bigger cubes has been around since the Stone Ages of 2009 and still refuses to die 13 years later. The process of writing the script for this video has revealed to me that this game has sold a total of 232 million copies over multiple platforms. So, if I have to take a guess, I think most people know what Minecraft is. Books, spin-off games, a theatrical film in the works, marketable plushies, you name it, Minecraft's probably got it. But for the sake of it, here's a quick introduction to Bedrock Edition. Minecraft is a game that you can play on virtually any platform these days. Your phone, your 3DS, your Switch, your computer, your PlayStation 6. While it initially had separate console editions for Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, PlayStation Vita, and Wii U, Bedrock Edition was Mojang's proposed solution for streamlining releases on any future consoles to come, essentially compressing certain features into one singular version of Minecraft with a few major changes. The first version I ever played of Bedrock Edition was on the Xbox One way back in 2017, and I suppose now is a good time to mention I've only ever played Minecraft on console, so my experience with Java Edition comes from other people's content online only. It was about two weeks ago that the desire to play this game once more overcame me for whatever reason, my Xbox One beckoning me to press the on button again and build another house, or whatever you do in Minecraft. So I thought, why not? What's the worst that can happen in a funny little game like Minecraft anyways? And so I booted it back up for the first time in a year and a half. Made myself a new world, and then... Yeah, it's a great start, honestly. Nearly drowning because I needed to check if my gameplay was recording properly aside, at the very least, it gave me mercy and immediately plopped me into an area with all the trees I could ever dream of chopping down. The one downside of playing Minecraft survival alone for someone as easily distracted as me is that the beginning of a new survival world is really slow. On any Minecraft edition you play. A lot of punching trees to make sticks and crafting materials and harvesting meat and wandering around. When a game is too open world, I find myself losing track of what I'm supposed to be doing every five minutes, thankfully cut down by the power of video editing. So in order to keep myself somewhat focused, I went in with a goal. Of sorts. Nothing too crazy, just finding a place to settle and getting the basics of a home built. Which is simple, right? As long as the lag from opening up bedrocks mildly cumbersome inventory and crafting menu didn't slow me down, I was off to a fairly decent start. In terms of materials, wood wasn't an issue because every direction I traveled in would yield more wood of different colors, as the world had been most kind to drop me in an area that consisted of ocean in one direction and a billion birch trees in the other. Minecraft, apart from being an open world sandbox game, also likes to put the fear of mortality into you. Health and hunger are the two things you'll have to keep track of in survival which means slaughtering some cows and pigs for a quick meal was also on my agenda, along with any sheep that came my way for the sake of the most stark white bed I could make at the time. I'm a bit of a picky person when it comes to where I build a starter base, with my hard-to-beat criteria being place that is flat, place that is close to village, with maybe a hint of place with trees somewhere in it sprinkled in. So while the tree and flat points were being well hit, any sign of trading buddies was not yet visible to me. There isn't even anything I'm hoping to learn in this experience beyond how to play the game again. An eventual scrambling around for such precious goods as coal, and coal, and more coal, and some copper, meant I had to stop venturing across the safe, somewhat safe overworld and take a bit of a trip into the dark. As evidenced by the title Minecraft, a big part of this game is going underground into the cave systems that they have. I'm now going to use this opportunity to preface that I think Minecraft's world generation abilities are some of the best out there I've ever seen, especially taking into account how vast the new cave systems really are. I'm only scratching the surface in my footage here, both figuratively and literally. There's a lot more that you can find than just what I did. And here I thought I was going to do a quick supply run through what seemed to be a small cave, so I set up shop and hoped for the best. Found myself a nice little crevice to take a peek in before realizing there were a good solid few nasty boys down there. So what do I do except bridge my way across, of course. Just place a block there, and there, 
and Oh. Fun fact, I'm not very good at Minecraft. I used to be good, maybe, until I stopped playing, and this recording session was like trying to relearn how to walk. I did eventually manage to clear out the cavern with a few losses in the process and discover that it wasn't exactly as worth it as I had thought for all the trouble, so it was evidently time to move on to fresher horizons. This time, with some far taller sights to see and iron to collect. Sometimes I only play Minecraft for the exploration aspect. You could say Minecraft is theoretically a peaceful game. Theoretically because it's like a farming simulator where skeletons like to punch you, or a walking simulator where skeletons like to punch you. When nothing's punching you, however, maybe then you can properly soak in the world around you. I think it ranks fairly high on my list of games that are weirdly beautiful to look at, you wouldn't expect a game so squarish to be photogenic, but surprises in life are hidden in the strangers of packages, and I do enjoy a good sunset now and again. A light in the distance of yet another scenic boat ride signaled the end at last for my wanderings. Villages are great structures for me because I can trade with villagers, steal all their supplies and crops, and also run around in desperate search for fish because I really want a pet cat. Also. A lot of wolves? Like, a lot of wolves, and if I want to tame those wolves, then I need bones, and so I have to get beat up by more skeletons. There's a cycle occurring whenever I play this game, and I don't know if I like it. But, guess what? Land to settle on has been obtained. After a few side quests, of course. And a lot of dirt. A lot of dirt. I spent about half of this first Minecraft gameplay chunk wandering, and the second half renovating. A decent 50-50 split between traveling and building things for myself that ultimately led me to a house in the works at last. It was a process, though. I had no plan for it beyond boating out in search of dark oak wood and conveniently discovering that it was a straight boat ride away to attain some. And you know what? As I took a moment to reflect on everything that I did over the course of several days between wood collecting and creeper avoiding, I couldn't deny that I had a lot of fun doing it. Even if I wasn't very good and died a lot of the time, the fact that my first official session of Minecraft in quite a while was finally winding down felt good. Fulfilling, even. I could worry too much about how pretty my house looks and whether or not it fills some arbitrary building rule. But at the end of the day, I just wanted something that was cozy. What I ended up was this, currently without a roof and still in desperate need of some interior decorating, but hey, I got plenty of time to make it look more lively later on. So, what did I learn from the Minecraft Bedrock experience? Life skills? Reflex improvement? The consequences of my own actions? No. Kind of. If anything, I learned to relax and bridge my way across gaps successfully, so it wasn't a total loss. I'd like to thank my five dogs, two cats, the two other dogs I accidentally blew up, the baby sheep I accidentally blew up, and this guy for joining me through my Minecraft Bedrock experience. Maybe I'll return to it sometime soon and finish what I started. Who knows what'll be waiting for me next time. And I'd also like to not thank this guy for everything he's ever done, ever.